question from Vaikunt about how to build immunity and reduce the risk of COVID-19. If you personally see Vaikunt, he himself is very frail and I, I know where the question is coming from, <laughs> but I think it would be really nice to address this. So, um, I like the fact that you called him frail, but a frail person may not be, uh, you know, a reduced immunity. It's a very, it's a, it's actually a myth. So, somebody who is frail is probably very healthy and has a very good metabolic rate, and, <laughs> and because of which his immunity would be very good as well. Uh, but thank you for bringing that up. Um, uh, I, I recall seeing another person who also asked the same question. So the, it is uh, said that if you take vitamin C every day for about one gram, it's supposed to build impunity. There is also a lot of studies which talk about ginger, chilies, um, vitamins, um, etc. But to be honest, if you have an immunity that you have built over the years where you did proper exercise and ate a balanced, nutritious uh, food and you were, you know, slept well, these were the th these are the three basic things that keeps one's immunity going. Uh, it's nothing that you can do now or immediate, which is a quick fix. Uh, you could try these things; they could add to your immunity. But as long as you maintain a healthy lifestyle and eat um, the nutritious food, and uh, which has a lot of vitamins, then you're good to go, and you have a good immunity. A follow-up question, which I see from Rima on the screen here. Staying indoors and not being exposed to sunlight reduces immunity. Is that true? Yes, there are some studies which show that your vitamin D levels get reduced. And um, that would be, if you're looking at vitamin D immunity, yes, if you are, your vitamin D levels are known to be reduced and you should be uh, supplemented with vitamin D in those cases. It is generally for people, you can't relate the deficiency to the immunity as such because sunlight and is related to vitamin D. Um, so if you're, if you're trying to uh, mention about that, yes, but otherwise directly immunity and sunlight uh, don't go together. I mean, it doesn't matter there. You did touch upon vaccines, uh, Dr. Spatika. Uh, there is one question. With the virus mutating so quickly, how effective will the vaccine be in the real world setting? This is a question from Ram. So thank you for that question. So let me tell you all a secret. Um, I never take a flu vaccine. <laughs> I know I'm saying this in public, but uh, it's it's been more than uh, 10 years since I ever took a flu vaccine. And in this part of the world, every year you're supposed to take a flu vaccine. And I always used to have a fight with my head of infection control because, um, you know, she used to say, Doc, you have to take your flu vaccine. And I would be like, there's no way I'm going to take the flu vaccine. And her reason was like, why? And I would say always to her, every new year you have 200 different variations of uh, the flu. So what is the purpose of taking the vaccine if it's going to get mutated? So uh, the reason why I'm telling you the story is that when they do make a vaccine, uh, they do their best to ensure that all the different variants are um, covered. But there is some amount of it that you cannot cover. So that does not mean that the vaccine is not effective. It only means that uh, probably you'll be able to cover 80% even if it mutates, you will still be able to cover 80%, but maybe there's about 20% that you may not be able to cover. And if your immunity is low or you have certain... Um, so when you say immunity here, most of what is talked about is about like when somebody has got any comorbidities like diabetes, hypertension, asthma, or any kind of lung disease, then that's when your immunity is low. And that's when if this vaccine is given also, it might not work because you've mutated or it has become stronger and its variant is different. So uh, the question is very valid, but with regards to COVID, it's, it's not like flu. It's very specific. It's, you know what it's made of now, and they are trying to build a vaccine very specific to it. So even if it gets mutated, it would only reduce the efficacy, but I don't think it would, um, it would not be ineffective. That's my personal take on it, yeah. There are a lot of concerns about letting the maid into the house to work or not, or letting your cook 
indoors to work or not is there something that you recommend that people take care of if you're having hired help coming home um you need to make sure that your hired help is checked every time they come into your house so maybe what you could do is have them come once in a week or twice a week to reduce the number of times they came in uh, and when they come in you have a rigorous um you know disciplined uh, way of getting them in you check if they have a temperature you check if they uh, make sure that they change their gloves they wear uh, a mask and when they are cleaning their surfaces uh, to make sure it's done um you know within a small span of time you don't have them staying in your house for 4 5 hours you try and limit the time if, uh, they are at home when there are less number of people at home or if they are in a certain just maintain the social distancing if possible and let them be there for an hour or so and then you ask them to leave so that should be the kind of thing uh for us for about a, a month we did not have both our cook and our maid during the peak uh, time because you know uh, when it's peaking the risk of infection is so high and we were in full lockdown at that time so we could not get anybody in unless they had uh, you know um a test which said that covid was negative so that was the rules in dubai so even now uh, they're still following it any maid or a cook who needs to come to your house has to first provide uh, a certificate that they are negative before they come in so that's something that's followed here but something that you could do in india as i said is reduce the time of exposure make sure they wear gloves when they step in uh, make sure you give them a mask which is new and fresh so all these things and of course ask them the um, uh, the question are you sick because i remember one of my um, one of my neighbors actually the maid um spent about an hour over there and then she came over to my place and um uh, for giving me something from there and the first question i asked her is are you unwell and she said yes i have a fever and i have throat pain and she gave me all the covid symptoms which was you know typical and then i asked her why are you even here then you you know that you need to go get tested and she was uh, unfortunately you know though she knew and though there were so many restrictions she just hid the fact that you know she was sick so you can always expect our hired help not to give us the facts and it's better that we follow a temperature check make sure that they are asymptomatic then they wear their gloves fresh gloves fresh mask and reduce the time that they spend in your house if you're looking at having them come in people are bored of sitting at homes but they really want to step out but there is a fear is it safe at all to step out or yes. do you recommend that people just stay indoors so during the peak the phase that you are in the phase that india is in at this moment you should not be stepping out at all um that is a time when we did, it was almost about i think april and may till all, almost the end of may uh, we were not allowed to step out at all because our cases were very high uh and uh, we are uh, we get fined if we step out so i don't know if india does fines but uh, during the peak it is not recommended to step out at all as much as possible because your cases are very high you do not know whom you're coming in contact with even if they are asymptomatic they could be carrying they could be carriers of infection they may have come in contact with somebody else and you don't know because they are asymptomatic that is a part that we have not uh, you know looked at because the percentage of asymptomatic is quite less but during the peaks it is expected um, to spread quicker so it's preferred that you do not step out at least till things come under control uh, and uh, you know in india it's very difficult to maintain social distancing you have a lot of people Uh, wherever you go so i think it's very um advisable not to step out as much as possible if you just want to go get some fresh air for 5 minutes from the corner and come back that's a different thing but avoid going out to bare minimum just for groceries or you know medications or a hospital visit um and do not visit friends relatives uh, or you know get togethers parties um even religious places unless and until you really need to go to uh, it's recommended during the peak phase to control all of this and um, try and avoid stepping out okay i think i see another question um should we change address and when we come back from outside 
And, uh, that's a very good question. And I think uh, the answer is the moment you step in, please walk into the washroom. Every piece of cloth goes for a wash. Even your earrings, jewelry, necklace, and you take a full wash from head to toe. So that's ideally which is uh, advisable during this phase when the infection rates are very high. Uh, but as you go, you would probably, you know, let go of that. Uh, but that's something that I did. And I think I lost all my hair during uh, the six weeks. So <laughs> I can tell you it was painful. <laughs> These are questions that I am uh, specifically looking at, uh, you know, in, 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 uh, in the current situation in Bangalore. For example, if you get uh, a symptom, how do you go about it? Do you have to, if you call the, uh, uh, the helpline, will somebody come and uh, if you're smart or do you have to go there? I mean, these are, I mean, that is one of my questions. So I think you need to talk to uh, the helpline will tell you whether you really need a test or not. You might have mild symptoms, but you may not require the test. And all you would need to do is quarantine yourself for 14 days. So that was what I was talking about, whether it's the symptom strategy, symptom based strategy or a test based strategy. So unless and until you have symptoms which are significant, they might not ask you to do a test. And even speaking to your local physician or to any of the hospitals, uh, doctors will help you find out if you need a test and if they are COVID uh, related symptoms or not. So I think that should be the approach where any symptom, please pick up the phone, talk to uh, the physician whom you know, or talk to the hospital lines that you would regularly visit. And they could direct you as to what is the next uh, you know, course of action. So it may not be that you require a test at all. Uh, if you're mildly symptomatic, you may not require it. So it just requires that two weeks you are quarantined. Uh, again, I think someone else had asked the same question. Did I answer uh, your question, Doc? Or is there something further you wanted to ask me? Um, well, I, I, I was, um, yeah, I understand that, you know, you one may not need the test, but, uh, you know, uh, it's say if even if I, I, the symptoms are, you know, real, like, you know, I have a cold and I have a fever, I mean, uh, do I have to go to a center for getting tested or will somebody, I mean, this is basically very uh, only to Bangalore situation. I think it's somebody who is working here as a doctor, I mean, I, that is what I thought, uh, you know, whether uh, somebody will come and take my swab. That was my question. It is possible. I can check with our Aster in Bangalore if they are doing that facility uh, because it is possible. They can do it everywhere. Um, Okay. And come home and take a swab. How reliable um, the current COVID diagnostic kits? There are so many discrepancies on the result, first negative and then positive. So the most reliable um, test is the RT-PCR which is the swab tests, which is through the nasal or the throat. All the rapid tests are, um, the, the rapid antigen test is very specific, but not sensitive. And the rapid antibody test is sensitive, but uh, not specific. So the most reliable and the gold standard will always be the RT-PCR test. I think I have one more question, which is, we have theoretical knowledge that the vaccine creation will take many years, but we are getting news that we are going to get it in another few months into market. Um, I highly doubt it. It would take at least uh, six months for that to happen. May not be unless they get a special approval and they skip some steps. Um, unlikely that it will happen that fast. And it will be great if I can see everybody and they show us their hand sanitizer. Can I request everyone to switch on their videos, please? So what we are going to do is we're going to do the steps. So once we get all of you guys on the video, let's try out how many steps we can remember that we saw. Shall we do that? Are we all ready? Great. So let's put some onto our hand, right? Go ahead, all the people whom I can see, please go ahead and put that. And then let's do, you know, the first, the first step of rubbing your hands. Then the second, which is both 
then switch the hands, right? Go into your finger spaces. Let's do the thumb and the other one. Let's shake hands together. Then roll your fingers into your palm both ways and then the full things. Great. So now I, you have done your hand hygiene. I suggest that you follow this every time you wash your hands or when you use your hand sanitizer. Thank you, Thank you so much. I sincerely thank you on behalf of everyone from Molecular Connections for taking time off, especially during such busy times where you are in the front line uh, and speaking to us today, addressing all our questions. Uh, if there are more questions which we could not answer in this one hour session, please feel free to share it. I think she's already given her Gmail as well. Thank you so much, uh, Krishna. It was really wonderful interacting with everyone. And yes, I, d I can understand the number of questions that people have in their minds. And it would be really, uh, you know, at these times, it's always good to get them cleared out so that, you know, you can be more peaceful. So I'm happy to be of help. Thank you so much for having me here and moderating this session. It was really wonderful um, speaking to everybody. Thank you.